Today is the day, is the beginning of miracles in my life. When we're looking at this passage of scripture, we are looking at the first miracle that Jesus performed. Jesus performed many miracles, but this is the first. The first miracle just so happened to take place at a wedding. Now let's look at the first verse. It says, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. I don't want to explore this scripture fundamentally at this point, but I'm going to look at this scripture uh, esoterically. I, I want to explore it from the inner meaning of the scripture, not the fundamental Sunday school version of this particular text, because the esoteric will help us understand how we can apply this scripture and what this text actually means to us. On the third day, a day represents a state of consciousness. The day represents a state of awareness. The third day is the day of, of awakening. On this third day, this wedding took place over a three-day period. The first day was the spirit. The second day is the soul, which is the mind. And this third day is the body. We understand that we are first spirit, soul, and then we are a mind, a body. Everything that takes place within our bodies should happen first in the realm of the spirit. From the realm of the spirit, it comes into our mind. And as it comes into our mind, the problem is, is as things from God are downloaded and come into our mind, they become defragmented as they go through the lenses of our minds. And we begin to pick these uh, words, the revelations of these visions that are coming from a prophetic stream of God. We begin to defragment them. They go through our experiences. They go through our limitations. They go through our hurts. They go through our pains. And then there they are interpreted and they go within our bodies. And our bodies begin to respond to those things accordingly. When you begin to uh, meditate on the word of God and you begin to confess the word of God and you begin to speak the word of God and you begin to speak those positive uh, confessions that God has concerning your body, concerning your life, when God gives you a revelation of healing that healing word does not become fragmented through your own lens because you're distracted by sickness and by the pain that you experience your body will begin to heal itself as soon as you can accept it within yourself that you are healed and you can be healed then your body deep down at the cellular level will begin to heal and repair itself when we're sleeping at night repair is taking place to the body scratch your skin and by morning a scab will be there two or three days there's new skin that have formed over our bodies have been designed to repair itself the same thing happens as it relates uh, to your finances uh, if you get this 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 word uh, concerning great wealth and abundance, uh, but you've had all of these great experiences of poverty, of lack, of limitation, then that word becomes defragmented as it goes through uh, the, the lens of your mind, of your experience, and your body continues to do things uh, to bring more poverty in your life, whether it be overspending, whether it be overeating, whether it's it's just losing money, whether it's gambling, focusing on addictions, things begin to happen, or not moving towards a, a better way of living, or not starting a new business, or what have you, wherever that channel is supposed to come from. So Jesus performed this first miracle, I'm going somewhere with this, on the third day at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Galilee means world, W-H-I-R-L. It's an activation. It's a stirring of, of energy. It's a stirring of power. It's a stirring of forces. When God begins to speak to us and begins to reveal to us the good, the better, the best, the highest for our lives, it happens at a place where there is a stirring. And what happens? 
happens is, is when you become inspired by a dream, when you become inspired by a vision, when you're inspired by a thought, by a word, you become energetic and you start moving towards it. You start moving towards it. My cousin called me yesterday and she's like, I need you to help me with this because she changes her business every week. I know she's probably watching and yes, I love you, but every week she changes the business. The name is more concepts. It's more ideas that come. She wakes up with this stuff and she puts it on paper and then she comes to me, the English major, and says, I make sense of it. And I'm like, none of this makes absolutely no sense to me. But me being the positive person that I am, I say, okay, we'll work with it. We're going to roll with it. Let's just try to figure this out. And then she'll say, can I get this in the next 30 minutes? And I'm like, mm -mm, no way possible because I got to first let this thing get within me. You know, but she was running off of what? That energy, that, that inspiration. And that's what happens to us when we receive something from God. It comes within, not without. When you get that word, that impression within you, it causes power to begin to move. And Jesus' mother was also there. What is Jesus' mother? Who does she represent in this particular text? Mary, the mother of Jesus, represents intuition. What is intuition? The ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. Now, discernment is to well judge. And we learn to discern according to the scripture, according to the word of God. But intuition is immediate. The word intuition comes from the Latin word in, in to it, which means in uh, it means upon and to it means to look it also means immediately so when intuition steps in it's an immediate response it's an immediate understanding of something that i consciously did not know i didn't have to think about this you're going to see this come into play so when you're at the place of your first of entering into your first miracle seeing that first place of manifestation Manifestation, you've got to learn to listen to that inner voice, that inner voice that comes in. It's your ability to understand something immediately. Say immediately. When I, I couldn't understand what my cousin had put in front of me, what she emailed me, because I had no intuition about it, but she did. She understood it immediately, but I did not. There was no need for conscious reasoning. So it comes in. Your intuition will step in right then at that point where you need something immediately. There is a problem that's taking place at this wedding. As we read the text, they have run out of wine. That is a problem at this Jewish wedding. That is a problem that we have run out out of wine. So Mary represents intuition, which is also a divine urge of our inner God within us. Come on. There's an inner urge. The intuition gives you an inner urge, a nudging, a tugging. You can read stories of some great uh, billionaires and great multimillionaires who invested. You can read their stories and some of them had made investments based upon a hunch. They got up. They hadn't read a book. They didn't understand something. But everybody say gut feeling. They had a gut feeling that this was the move I'm supposed to make. They had a gut feeling that I'm supposed to go to the golf course today. That was a gut feeling that I need to put all my money in on this today. Not tomorrow, not next week. I don't need to ask two or three friends about it. I'm sorry, wife. I love you, and I know we do everything together, but right now, I'm not discussing this with you. I just needed to make a move because I had an urge. Everybody say a divine urge. 
there's a divine urge that's taking place and that urging that nudging is pushing you and is telling you where you're supposed to be where you need to invest where you're not supposed to invest uh, where you where you need to show up it's coming sometimes in a dream it, it, it's just something immediately I need to make immediate turns you see we are created by God in the image and the likeness of God and so spiritual intuition is infused within our beings and it brings with it all the power that we need to live and express our best and our highest self. Tell the person on the left and the right of you it's time for you to express your best and your highest self. You may think that you're expressing your best and your highest self that's right. Tell them prophetically. They'll be here next Sunday. Hallelujah. You may, you may think I'm living my best self, my highest self, but God sent me by here with this message this morning to tell us prevailing life that it's time for us to express our best and highest self, which is our God self. In that self, there's no lack. There's no limitation. Come on, within that self, we don't give in to excuses. I told my friend the other night, I said, I don't have time for certain things. My reasoning for everything, when people start telling me what they can't do, Here's my solution. Get yourself some affirmations. Uh, you need to write out some statements that make sense to you about what you want to experience in life. Get up in the morning and meditate. Meditate before you go to bed uh, on those very things. Change your consciousness to change your world. Uh, change your perception. Change what you see. You will change what you see by changing what it is that you say. Because God has given us the power. Come on. On God in me to turn all these things around. Jesus is there with his disciples. Jesus represents the I am and the disciples represent the faculties of the powers of man. Here we go. Intuition is one of the faculties of the mind. God has given us intuition. It's nothing strange. It's nothing spooky. It's not psychic phenomenon. It's not witchcraft. It's not only something that women have, but men have it too. We have intuition, that nudging, that turning from God within that it's time for us to do something. They wanted wine. There was no more wine, but Jesus' mother Mary says, uh, uh, comes to Jesus and says, they have no wine. Jesus said unto her, he said, what am I supposed to do about it? He said, mine hour is not yet come. But his mother said unto the service, whatsoever he said unto you, she said, just do it. You see, Mary was not looking or paying any attention to Jesus' limitations. Because even Jesus at this moment was making an excuse from being his best and highest self. Jesus said, it's not yet my time. But now Jesus forgot what he has said in John 1 and 50. John 1 and 50, before we get to John 2, when you look at the last two scriptures, Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, he being Jesus, said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus spoke this spiritual expression out and did not perceive that it was time for him to experience that. Come on. Jesus told him, he said, you're going to see greater things than these. I want you to affirm, I'm going to see greater things than what I've seen. I'm getting ready to experience greater than what I've ever experienced. And Jesus said, afterwards, you will see. You shall see. He didn't say he would see. He said, you shall see. Heaven open up. Come on, revelation is opening up to you. Prophetic streams of consciousness are opening up to you. Angels of God ascending and descending. What are the angels of God descending and uh, ascending and descending? Are uh, uh, thoughts 
divine thoughts and divine revelations is coming down. That absolutely nerve impulses. It's the same thing that's coming from your brain down your spine. Those nerve impulses that's going up and down are just like the angels and they're what? They're energizing your body to move. So what did Jesus tell them to do? said get me some water there were six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews it had about two or three firkins which is about 25 pounds of water in each he said fill the water pots with water and they filled them to the brim and he said draw out now take out from that water and go and take it to the governor of the feast somebody say draw out from what is within you. I don't have time to deal with this, but within your brain, within your brain, within your mind, there is a part of the brain that's called the claustrum. And the claustrum uh, has an oil secretion. Oil represents what? The anointing. And from that claustrum, this oil comes out that's known as the sacred oil. It begins to go through a canal down your vertebrae and through your spine and the essence of it is as it goes through your nervous system it descends but at some point it must ascend and it goes back into your brain it goes back uh, into uh, your cerebellum and there things begin to happen new ideas and bursts of creativity begins to take place but there's a problem not with the descending the problem is with the ascension. What is the problem? The problem with the ascension of the oil is, is we eat the wrong things, we think the wrong things, and we do the wrong things. And that water, that cellular water, you have water that's around your brain. You have brain fluid that water begins to what dry up and as it begins to dry up what happens to the human being the the body begins to die when the person dies the brain fluid it dries up come on i'm talking a little anatomy to you but this will help you understand spirit and science works together so there's a drying up what's the problem at the at the wedding is the problem is is there is no more water wine. What's the problem in your life is that there is no more wine. There is no more essence. You have dried up. What happens when you got enough wine? It'll give you a little joy. You get a little drunk. It'll give you a little bit of joy. You know, you, you get happy just for a moment. But then Paul says in Ephesians, be not drunk with wine when in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Come on. And the Spirit is represented by water. So what took place at this marriage is uh, is there must be a marriage uh, between the I am God presence in you and a marriage between uh, your own self, your own mind. There has to be a marriage uh, and this takes you into a spiritual place uh, and spiritual regeneration. I hope this makes sense. Uh, spiritual regeneration will begin to take place uh, so we're not worried about there's no more wine now we're getting ready to just do what the I am says to do do what Jesus Jesus represents the I am and if I do exactly what he says to do then guess what I'm getting ready to have wine at this celebration I'm getting ready to experience that where there is no water there is drought no light can take place so you've got to have water everybody say draw out of you water is pure. It comes from a pure place. Uh, let me tell you something. God in this season will watch you to tap into the pureness of your life, uh, the pureness of spirit uh, so that you can manifest wine uh, that you've never experienced before. It's out of a pure place. Uh, God does not want us to go back into our bag of tricks. Uh, you don't have to hustle to pay your bills anymore. You don't have to go back to those things that you once knew. Come on, I'm doing this a new way. I'm doing this thing through a God God way and I'm going to have some spiritual manifestation in the eighth verse he said what draw out everybody say draw it out 
draw it out? How am I going to draw out of this? How am I going to draw out of this water? This, 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 this water that's within me. Jesus said in the scripture, he said, if you believe on me, as the scriptures have said, that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He told the woman of the well, he said, if you drink of this water, he said, you will never thirst. That physical water, H2O that we drink, it's depleted. Oh, but there's something in the spirit. You've got some water in you. You have a reserve of spirit in you that will never run out. Uh, the heat will not stop it. It will not become tainted. It will not become polluted because this thing is of spirit. So I got to begin to draw it out. How am I going to draw this thing out? This is why meditation is important. This is why it's imperative that I stop and I take time while we practice praying in the spirit at this church. We practice the presence of God. This is why I teach you all the time to take a few minutes. I don't care if you ever speak in tongues in this church, but when you get home by yourself, sit by yourself quietly with nobody but you in the Holy Spirit and begin to pray in your heavenly language and you begin to pray out in the spirit and things will begin to change. Inspiration will come to you. Your next move of life will come to you. The next step in the strategy, the missing piece of the puzzle, it will be revealed to you. He said, draw it out and take it to the governor of the feast that bear it. Who is the governor of the feast? It is God who is the Lord of the harvest. And God looked at that wine. This ruler tasted this wine and he said, wait a minute now. Usually we give out the best wine at the beginning and then by the end of the wedding that's when you put the cheap stuff out because everybody's drunk and they don't know you know you give them the good wine at the beginning and then you give them the good the the the, the you know the not so good stuff just got a little taste to it towards the end you water it down oh but what did the scripture tell us that the first will be made last and the last shall be made first he saved that good part for last let me tell you something beloved there's something else left inside of you. There's a good part that's left inside of you. There's a side of you that has not been seen. There's a manifestation that's supposed to come out of you that has not yet been revealed. The scripture says that the whole earth moans and groans for the manifestations of the sons of God. Somebody declare manifest that this is your time to manifest as you become who you're supposed to be spiritually. As you are regenerated spiritually as you come into a new consciousness, a new way of thinking, your conversation will begin to change, your expressions will begin to change and your manifestations will begin to change, you will be stop manifesting opportunities for poverty and you will begin to manifest demonstrations of wealth and abundance you will stop manifesting poor health, you will stop manifesting high blood pressure and diabetes and all of these kinds of things and illnesses and you'll start manifesting healing that the next time you get to your doctor's appointment the doctor will begin to declare that there's something has changed inside of you and you'll begin to know that it was not medical treatment that did it but you were able to do this through God in you that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed come on he saved the best for last. Somebody declared that God is saving the best for last for me. It's until now. He said you kept the good wine until now. You've not express your best self and your highest self until now because you've not known who you were. He said in the 11th verse this be this beginning of miracles did Jesus uh, in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed on him. Let me declare as we said in the beginning, uh, this is the beginning of miracles for you. That you're going to walk out of this place and manifest miracles. Uh, I expect a miracle on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But the essence of this miracle 
miracle is I'm not sitting on the sideline uh, waiting for God to make a miracle happen, uh, but I'm going to activate God in me. That's what took place, uh, is that was an activation. Uh, that was an activation uh, that will happen with the water turning into wine. Uh, that was an activation of divine power. Come on, there's an activation. Uh, tell your neighbor, activate it today. You've got to activate divine power. You've got to activate uh, the prophetic word of God. You've got to activate prosperity. You've got to activate healing. Uh, you've got to activate a new way of thinking. Uh, and you do this when you become tapped in, tuned in, and turned on to the spirit of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven uh, and his righteousness and all these things uh, shall be added unto you. Somebody ought to give God a praise uh, and declare that some stuff is getting ready to be added into my life. Uh, come on, some zeros and commas about to be added to your bank account. Uh, no negatives, but somebody shout zeros and commas uh, are being added to my bank account. Uh, increase is coming to my portfolio. Uh, I've got new houses I'm getting ready to own. Hallelujah. I already own these things. I'm coming in the manifestation. Uh, begin to declare that my investments are about to skyrocket. Uh, those things that were low are uh, getting ready to go up again. Uh, it's a new season. Shout, I am experiencing a miracle uh, because the miracle worker is within you. Uh, and let me declare that you're about to see a miracle in your life. Uh, this is the beginning. Declare this is the beginning of miracles in my life. As I listen to the Spirit of God, as I activate my spiritual self, my God self, we activate our natural selves all the time. We respond in fear. We respond in doubt. We respond in judgment. We respond in criticism. We respond in hatred. We respond in violence and aggression because those are natural responses. But I'm going to respond to these things now by activating my God self. When I activate my God self, I'm going to take authority. I'll speak to mountains. You'll speak to those mountains uh, and those mountains will be moved. You will speak those things which be not uh, as though they were and you will see them happening. God bless you today. Let us stand on our feet. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever you are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. And so it is. Amen. God bless you.